Uh, next, we have Rise of the Crimson Order, Crematoria Online, a little RPG novel written by Matthew J. Barber, Barbeller. Uh, it is, where is it? 375 pages, $3.99. That is available on Kindle Unlimited. Uh, here's the author's description, and it's, it's kind of long. Okay. Um, once you log in, you don't log out. Crematory Online is the world's first alternative reality game. Players transfer their consciousness into the game world, and 10,000 souls were chosen as the first wave of crematorians. Once they log in, they find themselves trapped in this gothic horror fantasy world. Uncover the secrets of Crematoria, Lucas Hutchins chooses to chooses to play as an investigator, which gives him the ability to find clues and solve cases. Uh, but Crematoria is a world where everyone has a skeleton in their closet and secrets are buried deep. Armed with a sword and a flintlock pistol, Lucas must defend himself against those who would kill to keep the truth hidden. Two souls, one destiny. Lucas teams up with Ellie, a heavy armor warrior enforcer for the Elden Judiciary. She is judge, jury, and executioner, and all rolled into one. Together they seek truth and justice, but at what cost? Uh, the Crimson Order rises. The Crimson Queen. Oh man, this is so long. The Crimson Queen is building an army of citizens from the li length and breadth of Crematory to spring, and a mysterious symbol is being left in their wake the sigil of the Crimson Order. Lucas and Ellie must fight side by side or die to save a world that is holding them both hostage. If Crematory burns, so will they. And there's a note saying that even though the author is Australian, the work has been written using American spelling and conventions. So that's a thing. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Here's the review portion. Um, basically, the story didn't work for me. Um, it already got a mark off with Flintlock. I'm not a big Flintlock fan. It's I'm like, just go full guns or go full fantasy. Uh, but like the in-between part of Flintlock always feels kind of awkward for me personally. So it's never really been a thing that I enjoyed. Um, but overall, the story to me kind of tries to be a lot of different things all at once. And they don't really mesh well. Even from like the novel description, you can actually tell... Um, that there's like this conflicting personalities almost of the, of the novel where it's trying to be like this detective story, um, and this like fantasy story and this like steampunkish flux story, but also, um, like this transport to a story and like those, all those things mushed together, um, including like a, a real weirdish cyberpunk, uh, kind of ending here just don't work well. To, and, and sometimes for me, when I was reading the story, I was like, there's like these distinct sections where it's like, oh, this is definitely a game section when you're talking to players. And then suddenly it feels like this regular non literary story, but it's just fantasy uh, where he's talking to who are supposed to be NPCs, but it's just treated like it's like they're regular fantasy characters in this world. And the main character is speaking, he's using code switching. I mean, it feels, it feels weird to me. Like it doesn't feel like it's, it's meshing very well. It's kind of the thing that didn't make the story work for me. Um, the there are actual you know RPG game mechanics for the detector stuff. Uh, it is set in a VR MMO, so it is lit RPG. There's definitely you know stat sheets and everything there, and character sheets and all that. So it, that, that that's all there. But again, there's this mesh of of concepts, and then that includes for some reason trapped in the game and also dying the game down the real life. Um, I don't know that it adds anything to the story besides like you know, making sure the main character doesn't die or doesn't, uh, like is, is motivated to, to do a thing. I'm like, and it, but it, seriously for me, it's like, I'm super tired of, of hearing the, of reading the, Oh, I'm trapped in the game. And the only way I can get out is to, to solve this puzzle or do this thing. I'm like, it's completely unnecessary. And I feel like authors are like, they read or they watch sort of online. I'm like, Oh, so that's what lit RPG needs. Like a requirement. I'm like, no, it isn't. It doesn't, it really doesn't. Um, it doesn't add anything to the story in, in my opinion. Um, and it's complete. And I, and I get when it's there and it works really well, but it doesn't really do anything for me. Um, and, and, and I'm just, it, I'm like, I'm super tired of it. Uh, but I'm saying that not that that's bringing this down too much. It's a minor thing, but a thing, um, the action of the story is okay. Um, and again, this is one of those conflicting concepts in that it's supposed to be a video game. It's supposed to be like the main character can build skills and everything. Um, but it also in the story, like has this weird descriptive quality, like, oh, this is supposed to be the most real story, you know, real video game ever. And where, you know, you can do a one shot to a vital organ and insta kill a character. Um, but at the same time, the main character doesn't have to actually 
be mad he's magically kind of good with a flintlock and gun and a sword and um and and so like there's this weird again conflict and like meshing of different concepts of like oh super realistic fantasy story uh where skills matter like real life skills matter and video game mechanics that don't always mesh well unfortunately um, the game mechanics of the story are, are mostly fairly normal, um, with the most unique being the ones added for the detective elements. Um, while they're well thought out and match elements from detective games, they kind of ruin the detective part of the story for me. Uh, and that's and again, that's just because in the end, they kind of made me feel like all the clues and all the connections are provided by the game, and the main character is led by the nose to them. Um, and it feels like he doesn't really earn the progress on his cases because, again, the game mechanics are pointing it out from us like he's pressing a button or activating a skill, and suddenly, oh, there's the clue he needs. And sometimes he's literally giving the information and the connections from those, you know, for those clues to figure out the case or whatever. And I was like, I feel like, oh, that's. That could have been a neat detective thing, but it's not anymore. Uh, and, and it just didn't work for me. Um, overall, I never cared of the character. Um, and again, many elements didn't really mesh well together for, for me in regards to the detective. And the action elements, they, they felt kind of far sometimes. And so it just didn't work for me. So for me, it gets a score 6 out of 10. Again, not a bad review score. Um, it's just didn't work for me might work for other people other people who enjoy um who really love detect- detective game stuff or who love flintlock stories um who or don't mind kind of the conflicting nature of it um might really enjoy this better they but for me it didn't work that's rise of the crimson order though uh, a crematory online literary novel with a score of six out of ten